everybody, Beth here from Our Liberty House, and I'm coming at you on September 20th. It is just the last couple days of summer here in Sacramento, which is Zone 9B if you're not familiar. So welcome if you're new and welcome back. Um, so today I just wanted to do kind of a, a really casual garden walkthrough, show you what we have going on in our garden as we transition from our summer growing into fall growing. So I'm just gonna flip this camera around and show you what's up. All right, so I'm gonna start over here on the west end of our garden in this box. And if you are new here, I just really quick do a quick recap. So we have one, two, three, four. We have a big, oops, it's out of zoom, big bed there in the back and then another raised bed over on the other side of our lawn. Um, and then a couple planters in the intermix, but I'm going to start over here. And as you can see, we've started to pull some of our summer plants out, but what remains is this huge zinnia, um, which is a great um, like long stem variety and they get really big. Um, and then we have down here, uh, oregano, which is making a really good comeback. Uh, this was not nearly this big during the heat of summer, but as it's getting cooler, uh, it's definitely expanding really nicely. And then I have echinacea right here growing. Uh, it looks like another flower is going to be producing right there. And both of those are perennial, so those should stay um, each year. And then uh, just moving down, there's a nice little honeybee saying hey. Um, I also have a ton of a really big thing of thyme over here too, which is another perennial. And I really could go through this and whack it back and harvest a bunch of it and start drying it out. So, and then kind of, I'll just walk around. I'm going to show you for fall. I direct sowed uh, some beets back here. We actually have planted them twice now because kind of the, the hardest part about direct sowing from summer into fall is going to be keeping your soil moist because especially here in Sacramento, we still are getting those like 90 to 100 degree days. And if you are not on top of it, um, that seed's gonna germinate and dry out um, and die. So I think that's what happened the first go because I didn't get any germinated beets back here. Um, I also did some uh, sunflower, teddy bear sunflowers. Uh, none of those germinated. So um, I've been hand watering, but I think today or tomorrow, Lucas and I are gonna actually expand some of the drip lines to help with um, this back row right here. So I'll keep you posted on uh, if we have any success with the beets this year, because so far I've gotten none. Moving over another bed over here, we just have another zinnia plant. It's the same uh, variety, just a different color. Um, and you'll see that's a common theme in our garden. I love these zinnias because um, they just can tolerate the Sacramento heat in the summer and give off really good blooms that the bees love. Uh, you can see one buzzing around over there. Unfortunately, this plant right here is kind of starting to get annihilated by aphids if you see up close. Um, which is pretty typical this time of year. It's the last few weeks I've been spraying a lot of neem oil on different plants to try to mitigate it, the aphids from spreading too much. But the, the trick with neem oil is you have to spray it directly on those aphids or else um, it, it, like they only die, I guess, if you spray them directly. So it usually takes a couple days or a couple treatments to um, really have a good effect on the aphid population. You of course wanna avoid spraying any ladybugs or beneficial insects um, directly with that neem oil. So continuing on in this bed, I have so far kept the echinacea of course, and there's a little shishito plant down here that has pretty well slowed down production, but I haven't had a need to pull it out yet. Um, so that's lingering from summer too. We have like a shorter variety of zinnia down here along the bottom. We have some like onion chives. This is floss flower. 
and gum frena for flowers. Gum frena is another one of my favorites. It makes a really good um, cut flower and it dries really nicely too. And then uh, for fall, so far we've direct sewed some leeks over here and then I added in bachelor button, which is another uh, cool cool season crop, or not cool season crop, but cool season flower to hopefully germinate. Um, but this is the second go with these as well. I think I just need to get some more irrigation in here to help me from uh, preventing these guys from drying out too much. And of course I won't not talk about our pumpkins. Our pumpkins unfortunately got planted kind of late. So they are doing well relatively. You know, we have good growth on them, but no fruit or any like mini pumpkins or anything growing yet. Uh, we planted a winter sweet variety is what this is. This is kind of a surprise variety. I don't remember what it is. It's uh, huge, <laughs> but uh, we have that in this box as well as the box between the arches that I'll, I'll walk over to now. So let's head on over there. So here's our famous arch with our cool little sign. <laughs> but uh, so that's the bed we just talked about. Um, we do have rain gutters in here, which um, is where we planted strawberries, which haven't been producing at all this summer. But since it's cooler out, they've started to um, produce more. I could harvest some of these today. Um, the struggle with these gutters, because we get a lot of comments and questions about them, is they're pretty cool. But I will say they dry out really, really quick. So even though like we have drip, a drip line running on these, we actually don't run our beds oh, be, um, every day. We run them like every three or four days. So in between days, these tend to dry out and you'll actually notice, you know, a lot of plant casualties <laughs> in here. I, I think that side's pretty good, but this side gets, you know, a bit more of the sun. So keep that in mind if you add those to your, your arch trellis. Um, and again, that's the other little pumpkin spot we have. And then in here, we still have some butternuts growing strong. Uh, I need to like read trellis a little bit of them. Um, so we've kept those because they're still producing pretty well. We have a trombocino here at the end too um, that I think is probably nearing the end of its life. Um, but our plan is with this arch trellis is to have everything in here peas on both sides. So you can see I've already direct sowed um, a couple different varieties of peas and I'm kind of just letting them grow in with the other vines from the summer because um, I expect these summer vines to maybe be in here like another week or two and then they also are providing shade for the new seedlings so that's kind of double duty double duty with uh, with the peas and then moving along to this bed the final bed over on this side of the garden um, this bed's actually looking pretty good because it's pretty full we purchased some starts from the local nursery and have planted this in those in here which is why I have the shade cloth hanging out which I could probably get rid of these have been now in the ground a couple weeks and I think have established pretty good root systems where they don't necessarily need as much protection but what I got I have uh, herbs in here like sage uh, that's doing really really well I have in here some Brussels sprouts, which you can see signs of what's probably like a cabbage worm that's eating these leaves. You'll see them, uh, oh, runs right there. Um, they're like little green worms that when you find them, you need to, oh, there's another one right there. Uh, pull them off, so I'm gonna go grab my gloves and do that really quick. So now that I got my gloves, cause I'm not gonna touch these things. Um, out just, just see them right there if it's in focus um, wait, I'm just, ugh. <laughs> not my mo but I will do it for the sake of Brussels sprouts if you had chickens they would love you oh yeah ugh, that's disgusting mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna check since there's obvious oh, there's another one Oh yeah, thanks. See, you need, they, they blend in really freaking well. 
but they'll wreak havoc on your, ew. Yeah. Oof. On your, uh, oh, there's another one. So, pro I mean, this is the best way, I think, to get rid of them is just to pull them off as you see them. Um, but I've heard, uh, what did you say, Lucas? You can use uh, BT. BT is a natural, is it a, a spray? Yeah. Um, to help repel them too. And um, we're big fans of neem oil. Neem oil doesn't kill them, but it will help repel them. So I think what I'll do once I finish inspecting is I might spray this with neem oil just to help repel any new ones from coming in because this, these fresh leaves are going to be prime lunch. Yeah. Hang that up. <clears throat> For these cabbage worms. Oh, up there's one. Okay, so now that that's done, I pulled probably, I don't know, half a dozen of those little worms off. But I inspected this brussel, that brussel. There's a broccoli over here that had a couple on it. So really any of those like brassica leaves are what the cabbage worms uh, love to munch on. And you'll see a uh, leftover from summer, we got a zucchini plant over here that still is producing a little baby zucchini. So I haven't pulled him yet. And his leaves aren't too bad with powdery mildew. Unlike this uh, yellow squash over here, you can just, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but see how much more white these leaves are. It's just like kind of a, a late summer season, but we have a big yellow crook neck on here, which if you remember from our last, I think it was our last video, I wasn't sure about these white ones because usually they're like bright yellow. We got into it and it was totally fine and edible. Um, it just looks a little funny so um but yeah that's pretty much it i think i planted a couple more of those teddy bear sunflowers right in here you can see a couple of them germinated um just to kind of fill in and then um planted some fern leaf dill over here we have more of that um oops sorry more of that floss flower kind of intermixed in there too from the summer some more um, Black Eyed Susan type sunflowers. And I threw in some chamomile too, um, recently planted these. So just, I like to intermix those herbs and, and flowers in with my vegetables. I think it does a really good job of inviting in beneficial insects as well as your pollinators. So that is the rest of this bed. So just moving on down the line, I will of course mention we did start a few seeds, not direct sowed in, a, in starch, just because these were recommended to be uh, transplants instead of direct sown. So we have planted some kale, just some viola flowers, and then this is some stock flowers. Um, so once they get a little bit bigger and stronger, we'll look at transplanting those. And then um, this is the bed where I found a black widow or a black widow is living kind of in this corner. And I'll real quick insert a video I took about a week or so, a week and a half ago um, about this black widow that I think is kind of funny. So I'm going to insert that now. This web lives, um, it's probably hard to see on camera, but it lives between the jalapeno and the zinnia. It's kind of like all like up in there. Um, and I don't see the black widow today, so I hope you guys don't think I'm totally full of it because I swear to you I've seen it a couple times and I'm nervous to put my fingers anywhere near those jalapenos that I want to harvest or even this Fresno chili pepper that's looking a little wild. Um, because black widows freak me out. And so I don't necessarily want to spray Raid or anything chemical because I like to eat in this soil or from the soil. So I have a neem oil. I literally don't know if this is going to work 
Um, oh my God, I see it. I see it, I see it, I see it, do you see it? Ooh, it doesn't look happy. Okay, please hope to God that kills it. But um, I will report back. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope I got that on camera because it did freak out a little bit. Um, but I will report back if I continue to see it over the next few days. I'm gonna spray some more neem oil just to be safe. So you saw in that video, I sprayed the crap out of that little corner with neem oil. Um, that did not kill the Black Widow. And I don't know if it's because, you know, I maybe didn't spray it directly or spray it enough directly, or if neem oil just will not kill that large of a spider. Um, I haven't seen it in a few days. I got rid of the spider web that, or its nest, you know, that it's been living in, but it seems that the web is back. So I think it's still in there. I'm not gonna get close to it today, um, but I'll, I digress, I'll carry on. Um, so this is a monstrosity of a tomato plant, and it's, um, this is our green zebra tomato, which we're definitely gonna plant again, it was delicious. Um, and we did this in a, bur in a Florida weave. <laughs> I always wanna call it a Carolina weave, but it's a Florida weave. Um, and kind of late summer neglect, um, I think a lot of gardeners have is we, you know, just kind of stopped pruning it and it's just has grown pretty wild. And quite honestly, it's, it still has flowers, but we haven't gotten a tomato off of it in a little while. So I think probably today or later this week, we'll either pull out the whole plant or prune it back quite a bit and start prepping this bed for um, different fall vegetables. And you'll see here in the back, we just have more zinnias. Um, and behind the zinnias is actually some basil uh, that's crazy tall um, and needs to be harvested. So that's kind of on our docket too in the next couple weeks is to uh, kind of harvest out this bed. Like you can see, this is, um, it says it's a Fresno chili. We bought it just like off the rack at a nursery but I think it was mislabeled because these, these don't look like Fresno chilies. Um, but I've kind of been avoiding harvesting because of that, the spider situation. But here's just kind of the view of the other side of this bed and it's massive overgrownness. And then um, here's Lisa, our lemon tree, who um, I don't know if we talked about it too much last year, but she had, um, really bad leaf miners so we heavily pruned her so we're not um gonna get quite as many lemons as we did last year but it looks like we're gonna be be doing pretty good i haven't seen too much leaf miner evidence um trying to find one just to see if i can show you guys but um it looks she's looking pretty healthy we did like a foliar spray on her which really helped this last uh winter season and then um so i'm gonna quick pause because uh, we're actually gonna be building a potting bench right here which i'm really really excited about we bought the wood which has been sitting over there for uh, far too long but um hopefully that's going to be coming up soon and we'll film a video on just kind of how we're designing and building it um so stay tuned for that and then um this is kind of our row of like tree boxes we plant some different things in like they're on the end is the Jerusalem artichoke, which is, oh gosh, 15 feet tall probably now <laughs> and starting to flower, which is fine. But it's a year round, so rhizome type uh, plant. So that's what you harvest are the rhizomes in there, but um, that's not for another couple months. It's really once these uh, giant stalks start dying back is when you know it's ready to harvest and you want to make sure you put these or plant them in a box because they spread like crazy. Um, our tomatillos right here, I think. Yeah, I need to harvest some of these as well. Uh, it's doing pretty good. I didn't, I don't think we did the best job trellising it. I, I think next year I wanna maybe plant these in a different location that's easier to get to. But um, we planted two plants so they pollinate each other and we've had a pretty good year of tomatillos. Um, here are just kind of some rant. It's an echinacea with floss flower and a, a tomato that didn't do too hot for us. And uh, 
And here is just another, this is a Fresno chili and it looks like a Fresno chili. Some marigolds um, down there. And uh, this is a Cajun bell pepper. This was kind of a, a Home Depot rack special. We just kind of bought some extra things to fill in over there. Uh, if you keep walking down into our garden, so we have our, our blueberry plants here, which are spring harvest. So we're um, not doing anything with those. We have another pumpkin growing over here who's looking pretty healthy, although some of these leaves are looking a little crunchy. So I maybe need to check the watering and the irrigation over here. Uh, we tried to plant some beets back here too, but you can see this is midday right now and, and the sun is beating. So I think what, before I reseed, I'm going to reseed, but before I do that, I'm gonna move some shade cloth over here to hopefully help um, keep those little seedlings alive once they germinate. And hopefully we get beets this year. I really want beets, I love beets. <clears throat> um, and then um, I'll come back to this wall, but right over here, you'll see um, a whole bunch of our seeds. Seedlings have germinated, which is pretty exciting. This bed gets a lot of shade. It's facing, um, this is on the south side, I had to really think about that, of our yard. Uh, so because of the neighbor's fence and kind of just how the sun is, um, this tends to get a lot of shade, which is great. Uh, so we planted a bunch of our lettuces. Uh, so we have a romaine, arugula, get a little bit closer look. So there's all of our romaine I could use, uh, probably thin it out a little bit. The arugula there, the spinach didn't seem to germinate quite as well. Um, there's just, you know, a few right in here. That's a weed. Uh, and then butter crunch right up here. Um, I did plant some borage, which is all right in here. Unfortunately, one of, we have some feral cats in our neighborhood and one of the feral cats likes to, uh, has taken this bed up as the cat box, which is not good. Um, we're trying to trap that cat, uh, long story short, to get it spayed or neutered. But in the meantime, I might just throw down, oh yeah, there's some poop right there I need to pull up. Um, anyways, I digress. <laughs> we'll hopefully uh, avoid the, the problem of the cat soon. Um, <clears throat> but we have uh, radishes back here too, which look really, really good. Um, and then I tried some, uh, it's like another cool season. So it's a Nigella Delf Delft Blue. Uh, it looks like a couple germinated, but not a lot. And there's a couple more right down here. So I might try to reseed some of those too, but we'll see. And then this back wall is like our tomato wall. If you follow, have been following our channel, you've seen a lot of content about our tomatoes this year. Um, and they've pretty much run its course. Lucas is going to be pulling these in the next couple days. Um, just because they, they're, they're done. They, we haven't been producing much for tomatoes in the last couple weeks. But in front is all of our peppers, which it's prime time peppers, pepper growing right now. And if you're in the area, you know all of your peppers, peppers are producing. So I'll just quick do the rundown of what we have um, planted. I have no intent to pull these out anytime soon because they're just really prolific, but our um, shishitos, right in here. We do have some basil here in the back. I'm just gonna, if you top your um, basil, I like to kind of pull off these flowers. Sorry, my camera is probably not in the best position. Um, kind of helps keep them producing without going to seed. Um, here we have a, let's see if you can see it, a, a Merlot pepper, which is actually a pretty good size one. Um, here's one that actually looks like We've missed it because it's turned red, so we'll try to uh, pick that. A couple more right there. Um, what? Oh, another one. So we have quite a few of those, actually. Um, the Merlot peppers are cool because they, I mean, they look cool, but quite honestly, when you cut into them, they're green on the inside, so it tastes just like a green bell pepper. And if you cook them or saute them, they turn green, too. So I don't know if I'm going to plant these again next year, but... They were kind of fun this year. Um, one of the exciting peppers we were, or one of one of the peppers we were most excited about were the Habanandas from row seven. Um, 
which I'm not like super impressed with them, but we do have a few in here and we haven't harvested anything. Um, we planted three plants, three or four, I think there's three in here. Um, not super prolific, but I'm excited once um, those do turn uh, the right color to try them out and eat some. Um, another pepper that did really well is the Hungarian wax pepper, um, which these are just super delicious. They have a kind of a wide range of heat. Some are, if you pick them early, they're less hot. And if you let them grow uh, for a bit, they're more hot. There is a giant spider web back in there. That's gross. Uh, I think you can actually see there's a red one hanging out back in that corner. I probably have just missed it. And just like, look how top heavy these are. I really should go through and harvest uh, some of these later today. And then a lot more basil here in the corner. I'm just gonna pull some of these flowers off while I'm thinking about it. And then um, we need to harvest some basil. And I've, I've been harvesting a little bit here and there and just drying it for like just dried basil to add to things. But I do wanna make a batch of, of basil pesto. Oh, oops. I do wanna make a batch of basil pesto. So I think that's kind of on our to-do list too. And just, I feel like I've said that a lot today. <laughs> we have a lot to do, um, but that is what it's all about, right? So I'm gonna walk you um, kind of back across our garden because here's the gate to our lawn. So I'm going to kind of walk in this direction and show you our final bed. We have struggled a little bit so far this year, but let me show you why. So let me uh, turn this camera back around. And on the way there, I'll just mention, um, cause I haven't really done a whole garden tour on um, YouTube in a little bit, but we have a rosemary plant that's humongous. I need to trim that and harvest. And then our roses are doing super well. They're in kind of their prime time. And I'm just gonna step back a little bit to kind of show you the scale of these roses. They're uh, both this one and this one are the same variety. It's a hybrid tea. I have a couple videos just about care on those. You can check them out. And then our climbing rose has quite literally outgrown its trellis, but uh, looking pretty. And then um, you can tell we're just transitioning to the cool season because a lot of our nasturtiums are popping back up. We just kind of scattered some seeds here a couple seasons ago and uh, they kind of grow when it's the right time. But finally, here's like our newest garden bed. This is one we kind of did a tutorial on on our YouTube to show you how to build um, this style. But uh, this is a great bed because it's on a good side of the lawn that gets really good like morning sun, but then afternoon shade. And it's probably right about noon or 1230 and you can kind of see that shade creeping in. Um, so like this pumpkin, for example, is looking pretty sad, but really once it gets shaded out this um, evening, it's gonna perk right back up. This is a sign, you know, it doesn't need water when you see so, like tenting like this. Um, this is totally normal. It's just, it's, it's hot and it doesn't like it, but it's totally fine. And you don't need to change anything with it. But in this bed, uh, we planted a few, bok choys, um, which you'll see, I got, yeah, this one right here is a bok choy, that's a bok choy, and then in the middle, here's another, what's supposed to be a Brussels sprout, which if you remember from the beginning of this video, uh, it, this got destroyed by those little cabbage worms, and I didn't do enough at the beginning. Um, I actually shot a video about this bed uh, a few days ago. I'm gonna plug that in right now so you can kind of see um, what this looked like before it got destroyed. All right, so I came over to check on this bed because I planted a bunch of seeds and then these transplants. And I noticed pretty quickly that something has been eating, eating these poor plants and they're might be one of the suspects is this little worm. That can't be good. Let me get a better shot. All right, so that little guy looks like a cabbage looper and I'm sorry for the background noise. My neighbor's doing something weird. 
Um, so, there are a couple ways to get rid of these guys, and of course manual remover is one of them. Um, I actually got neem oil right next to me because I'm going to try and spray for uh, where for these guys. Um, so I'm just gonna spray it with neem oil and just kind of see what happens and then check back in like 30 minutes or so and see if it if it dies and if not I'll throw some gloves on and, and pull it off. Uh, but I'm gonna spray for sure with neem oil just to make sure that if there's any other ones that I'm not seeing I'm gonna kill all of them and remove all of them because that's definitely what's eating all of these poor transplants and at this stage of their lives I'm afraid they're not going to recover so I'm gonna be a little aggressive on that. Alright, it's been about five minutes I have lost the cabbage worm. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but um, it's no longer munching on the leaves, so I don't know if that means it kind of fell off. Maybe you dug into the earth. Um, but it definitely didn't look good when I sprayed it, so I'm hoping that's a good sign. Another news, these little stink bugs are still moving around like nothing happened. So I think I'm going to try to hit them one more time with the neem and if it doesn't slow them down I'm going to go manual, get my gloves on and smush them. So you saw in that video that I tried spraying just straight neem oil um, which was an experiment and you could see it it didn't kill those cabbage worms. I should have just been pulling them off like I did earlier and maybe I could have saved this Brussels sprout or this cauliflower. Um, and then this pak choy, those little red bugs that you saw, um, oh, there's still one on there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Um, those also, the neem oil didn't do much for that. Plant is, uh, like browning leaves is literally because this type of bug or pest sucks the sap out of the host plant which will eventually lead to the death of that plant. So the best or easiest way to get rid of these guys, especially when you only have a few, is to simply like pick them off when you see them. So I'm just gonna inspect this plant. I can see one right there in the middle. So I'm gonna pull it off and squish it. Oh, Lucas has his gloves on, so I'm gonna let him pick it off and squish it. Do you see it there in the center? Oh. There it is. Well done. Yeah, if you have a, a big infestation or you struggle with it, they say there's some trap plants that might help um, get them off, but truly the, the best way is probably gonna be the squish method, which I'm late to the game. I should have done that. Um, a couple weeks ago when I first saw a bunch of these. Oh, there's, one. Oh, there's another one. Oh. I look behind all the leaves. I don't know if this plant is salvageable, but Probably not. we have a uh, no big rush on this bed or we don't need the space. We might leave it and just see if, you know, they kind of grow back on their own, but if not, we'll replace, replace these plants. Uh, I did direct sow some carrots there in the back, which I don't think uh, worked out for me. I might need to reseed those, which seems to be a theme in this video, but that's okay. Um, borage did pop up and then uh, some more teddy bear sunflowers and then um, some more of that nigella um, seeds I kind of sprinkled in right in here so I'm not sure 
I almost think the nigellas are these little guys that might have like washed over because this looks like the teddy bear sunflower. Um, and this is borage right here. So um, that's kind of what we got going on. And oh, look, I think we have a, a pumpkin finally growing. That's super exciting. I haven't seen one of those yet. So very cool. And then I just want to show you because I can see, don't mind the mess, but here is the third kitten we have yet to capture. She has, she or he, I'm not sure, has been kind of hanging out over here. Um, so we're gonna try to trap this little kitty this week and hopefully get it spayed or neutered and then released back out into the wild. Um, so yeah, that's our fun side project right now. And then I'll just quickly mention too, if you're wondering what this huge climbing vine is, that's taking over this side of the house. This is a passion fruit vine and jury's still out. You know, if I regret planting it right here because these are crazy fast growers um, and they're really kind of aggressive, but not too. We just have to really stay on top of like pruning these top pieces so it doesn't like climb into the house by any means and kind of cutting it off right here. So, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend planting it like this, uh, but it's pretty cool. And, but it's pretty cool. I just have to stay on top of uh, pruning, pruning it, so. So that's really it uh, for what's growing in the garden. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. It's fun to walk you through. Hope you like this casual, just kind of show and tell kind of vibe for this video. If you did, let me know. Um, I can definitely do some more of these. And if you have any questions about anything I talked about today, uh, be sure to drop that in the comments too. I'd love to answer that. And if you want to keep in touch with us, Instagram is our favorite place to hang out. So you can check us out at our Liberty House. I'll see you next week. Bye.